here and welcome to the garden. It is a very hot um, midday here in Virginia. My name is Anna. If you are new, welcome to the garden. So I'm coming out today to talk about my Heliopsis plant. If you have been around here at all, you know that I have been just absolutely struggling to keep it watered enough throughout the season. And over the last couple years, I've started to add more and more perennials into containers in the container garden, which I absolutely love. I think they're such a great addition to a container garden. Um, and even though it's tempting to stick to all annuals, perennials can really add a lot. Like I've got my beautiful phlox over there, a lot of different fun things in containers. But inevitably, you get to the point where they start to outgrow the containers. And um, that was really what was happening with my Heliopsis. So I started noticing the first kind of big sign was that I was just watering and watering and watering and I could not get this plant enough water. It still looked beautiful. So I think, you know, the second sign you might start to see your um, perennial starting to fade and starting to kind of, uh, you know, not look as great. My Heliopsis was looking amazing. It was doing super well, um, but it just, I couldn't keep it watered. So I moved it over here a couple weeks ago, still couldn't keep it watered. And you may notice I ended up putting it into a different pot. So I actually bumped it up a pretty good um, size. It, like there's at least two inches or so all the way around the plant as far as space. And the root ball on this plant was so crazy grown. The root, um, it was so root bound, I should say, just, it was all roots. There was hardly any soil left, which is, you know, really a sign that I let it go too long. Honest, I probably should have um, up potted it probably in the spring, but I only had it in that container for one season. So that shows you some perennials really grow so fast and put on such an intensive root system. So it just like took up the whole container in the matter of a season and I just wasn't prepared for it. But I moved it into a bigger pot and then I also put it in a self watering pot. Now I don't always love self watering containers. I have had mixed results. Sometimes I have had issues with them um, getting like too waterlogged and essentially not like not draining properly and then the plants get like overly waterlogged. So now I'm gonna keep an eye out for that. If I start to see this plant wilting again, I will know that it's not a lack of water issue. It is a too much water issue, which is another problem that you can have in a container garden. You can end up um, with plants being water, like just overly water bound and having root rot. Um, so if you see that you're watering your container and the soil is still moist, but the plant is like wilting and basically looking like it needs water, but it doesn't, that's a sign that you might actually have a drainage problem and have like the other issue going on. So I am gonna keep an eye out for that just in case with the self-watering container, we get into any issues. Um, but I, I cleaned the whole container out. I feel like it's working properly. And I just thought that since this plant has been chronically drying out so much, it would be a benefit to put it in a self-watering container and make sure that it always has water. Because otherwise I'm a little worried that it's had so much stress from the like fluctuations and the, the lack of water that it's just gonna end up hurting the overall health of the plant, basically. So that's my thought with this container and I'm super happy with it now. I debated planting something around it. I also really like to pack containers in and plant a lot of things together. But I just figured in this instance, um, I would I kind of just like let it be all on its own in that container and just make sure that, that everything's going okay with it. Looking super healthy and super happy. We are here in the, it's like midday right now. And you can see it's um, maybe a little bit, the heat is just barely touching those leaves, but it's not wilting. It's not looking anywhere near how it was looking. And I'm just, I'm just super happy. And this is like, I think it's called Midnight Summer or Summer Night Heliopsis. And it's got these really pretty like dark stems and then a little bit darker center. Some of the Heliopsis you see are real bright all the way through the whole flower. But I really like this one because it's got a little bit of the darker um, center. So it almost has a little bit of a sunflower look or a black eyed Susan look. That's really pretty. I've been really enjoying that. And I think it fits really nicely with the color schemes and the tones of the garden. It's just, it's just super, it's super good. 
Um, and I've been checking the other perennials in the containers and they are doing okay. You can see here my coral cream drop flocks is looking absolutely beautiful. So happy. Big full clusters of flowers. The mango tango. Um, Anise hiss up here. This is another perennial that is um, in a container. It's looking great. No signs of stress there. No water issues. We've got another echinacea. So I do try to just keep an eye on all these perennials, especially because I kind of stick them, you know, in and back and around in the um, arrangements of containers and just make sure that we're not, um, you know, having any issues. But so far, all the other perennials are doing well. This one I'm very excited to see open. This is a Blackjack Gold Black-Eyed Susan. It's such a pretty flower. I absolutely cannot wait to this to start to open. It's going to be really stunning. Just a matter of really finding what works container-wise um, for these different perennials. So all of those are in either terracotta or plastic, traditional plastic containers. As I said, I got the Heliopsis in a self-watering container. And then I've got a couple things growing in grow bags, which the grow bags are kind of nice because they do a little bit of air pruning on the root. So the roots hit the edge and then they kind of like, they hit it and stop growing, kind of prunes the roots, which is nice too, because I think it, it kind of helps reduce that root boundness. This Heliopsis was so crazy root bound. I mean, the roots were just going around and around and around and around like, I had, to, I had to break up the roots, which I don't usually do. Um, but you can see over here, I've got the, uh, this is a butterfly bush over butterfly here. Butterfly bush is over here in a grow bag and doing really well. This is a 15 gallon grow bag and it's a Pugster blue butterfly bush. So it's kind of like a dwarf butterfly bush. It's doing super happy in that container. And then I actually have, which well, I haven't really shown yet this year, hardy banana plant, which is really starting to come into its own the last couple weeks. It's super fun. So I'm here in Virginia. I'm in zone seven, seven A, which is not really um, banana locations, like a typical banana plant, but this hardy banana does super well in our climate. And it actually came back and wintered over in this grow bag. And, and it's looking beautiful. I do make sure that it gets enough water because bananas like, you know, a bit more water than say the butterfly bush, but it is a super big plant that's been really happy so far in this container. So I'm really encouraged um, to see that. And a super fun tropical. If you live in a not as tropical um, environment and you want a, a tropical plant. Bananas are really cool um, perennial and something that you can grow in a container and uh, and it does really well. And, and I said the grow bag is a, is a good location for that. So just some things that I think about with my um, perennials and when to bump them up in container size. I do water all my perennials with a water soluble fertilizer, just like a general fish fertilizer once a month. Um, and then sometimes I'll give them like at the beginning of the season, a slow release fertilizer. But other than that, I don't really fertilize them too much in containers, not the way I fertilize my annuals, which is like every week, um, just to make sure that they get, you know, a little bit of food. But I've been very encouraged this year. I think the Heliopsis is really, it's the only one that I've had to upplant as a second year perennial. And that one just, I mean, it's a huge plant too. It's like, I don't know, three or four feet tall. It's really, really massive and super fun. So yeah, it's, as I said, it's, starting we're starting to get all the perennials blooming so this is also a really you know fun season now as we get into july and everything starts blooming and taking off fly bush finally opened which was something i was waiting for that one is so pretty i just love the color of that blue and the pugster blue and then i always look forward to the season when the flocks start blooming because they are so gorgeous and then they'll just keep co going all the way to the end of the season and they just kind of keep flushing and flushing and flushing you don't have to deadhead or anything and then also another one that just opened was the lesser catmint here which this is my third year with these in a con the same container. They are still doing great, looking super healthy. And this is such a fantastic pollinator plant. So if you wanna bring in the bees to your garden, I definitely say get one of these lesser catmints. The name is lesser and I it's definitely not like a lesser plant. It is a beautiful catmint and a super good uh, container plant. Um, Cause they just don't show any sign of outgrowing their containers. I think I've got this in like a 12 inch, 15 inch pot. And yeah, I just has keep, kept going uh, really well, wintered over super nicely in the containers, no issue with 
you know, wintering over or anything like that. I did keep almost all of my plants in their containers just outside over the winter. Didn't do anything special with the perennials. One that I brought into my little unheated greenhouse occasionally were the Stillwater Clematis just because I wanted to baby them. Um, but like the banana and everything that stayed out and did great. Kind of was slow coming up. I wasn't sure in the spring. I thought, oh, maybe the banana didn't make it. Um, that was one I was a little worried about, but it, it came right back up. And that is the only thing with the hardy bananas is they will die back down to the ground. Um, so you're not gonna get banana fruit unless you bring the plant inside and grow it as a house plant or something. They'll die back down to the ground. You just chop them off and then they flush back in the spring. A little bit late. So if you get one, um, be patient and it'll come back uh, eventually, hopefully, and, and mine did super well. So that's, yeah, all the container perennials, I think. It is super fun out here. I need to film another July tour pretty soon because everything is just starting to grow, but I'm really encouraged and super happy to see that the Heliopsis is, is doing okay. And I don't have to come out and water, which, is good as well a lot of rain so i haven't really even had to water many of the containers much other than fertilizing except for that heliopsis was the one that i was still having to come out and water so now i'm actually getting a little bit of a true break from watering and that has been good as well and the only thing left that i'm really babying the containers are my little perennial nursery plants this is my little plant hospital i've got the two climbing roses in the plant hospital and then i have one of the still water clematis died all the way back to this little nub and now it's putting on fresh growth, so I'm just babying it, as I said, and hopefully that will come back. As always, thank you so much for watching. We're gonna go inside, and I will talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.